What do you think is the most important, valuable thing in editing? I'll give you a hint. That's right. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you some of the hotkeys in Lightroom because if you can really start using your hands and your fingers to speed up your editing, it is amazing how much time you will save just simply by knowing a few of these and incorporating them in your editing. Now I am going to try and keep this video very short. I'm gonna go through these very fast and I have something for you at the end of the video which will make this much, much easier. But let's get into Lightroom and get started. All right, the first one is very, very simple and you probably already know it. It's simply the before and after. On a keyboard, you just hit the backslash. Before, after, easy. No problem, you probably knew that one. The second one is the crop tool. Now, instead of just going up here and pressing crop, you can simply just press R on your keyboard and it opens up the crop feature. But did you know that you can press X to rotate it so you can go from horizontal to vertical or vertical to horizontal, whichever way. But did you know if you press O on the keyboard, you can change the grid layout to whatever one that works for your photo. Let's say we're using the golden spiral here. Well, let's say your photo isn't arranged this way. Press shift and zero, and you can then rotate the grid layout, which is awesome. So freaking cool when you're trying to um, compose your photos in Lightroom. Now the next one, let's say you wanna know the specs of your photo, the settings and whatnot. Well, you could go up to Instagram, uh, <laughs> Instagram. You could go up to the histogram and look right here, or you could just press I on the keyboard and you'll notice right up here, you have the file name, the date it was taken, the size, press I again, now you have the settings. You have the shutter, the aperture, the ISO, the lens it was shot with, and all the data of this image, which makes it so much easier than trying to go up here to the histogram and look at that again. So let's press I to get rid of it and go on to the next one. The next one is kind of some editing tools. Really, really simple. Let's say you wanna make this photo black and white or see what it looks like. Press V on the keyboard and boom. Now you have a black and white image, which you can then go and edit to your liking as a black and white. Let's say you wanna do the white balance. Well, instead of coming over here and clicking this eyedropper or adjusting these, adju these settings here, press W, you'll get the eyedropper immediately, find a neutral color and set. Boom, white balance set, piece of cake. The next is clipping. Now, what is clipping? Well, when your whites are too white or your blacks are too black, you then get loss of information. If you have pure white, it's pure white. If you have pure black, it's pure black. There's no other data. So what clipping does is it allows you to see what parts of your image are pure white or pure black. So all you have to do is press J on the keyboard. You'll notice up here on the histogram, these boxes are now highlighted. So if I press J again to turn it off, there's no box, white box around it. Press J again, now clipping is on. So what is that gonna do? If I raise the white slider, you'll notice as soon as I get pure white, it'll start showing as red. And if I adjust the black slider, and as soon as I start seeing pure black, I'll start seeing blue on the image. So that is where pure black and pure white are. So let's raise this until we see almost zero blue, and then we'll lower this until we see almost no white. And that is your proper white and black point. Now there is a little trick to this. If you push and hold the Alt or Option key, Option on a Mac, and then click, push and hold it, and then click the slider, the screen will turn black. Now, as you raise this, you will see more and more white or red in this case, which is the pure white. So this is how you can set your proper white and black point. So there's white, push and hold the option key. There's your black. So you just find the right spot and then there you go. There's your optimum white and black points. Now to turn off clipping, simply press J on the keyboard and there you go. The next one is kind of a quick way to re uh, reset things. Now you can easily just press reset here, but what does that do? Well, that resets all of your edits throughout the entire image. Now, what you can do is you can push and hold alter option. You'll notice right here, you see how it says tone right here? Push alter option, it says reset tone, reset presence. If you scroll down here, let's say you go into effects, reset post vignette cropping, reset grain, and this works on all of it. Let's say you wanna reset these, you can reset them individually. This means you can reset certain panels without resetting all of your edits. So let's go into the basic and let's just say we wanna reset the tone. Well, there we go. Now we've reset the tone and nothing else in the entire image, just those six 
adjustments, which makes it so much better than going all the way back and trying to figure out what you're trying to do next. That's some stressful, <laughs> stressful stuff. <laughs> Now, let's say you want to do some touch-ups. You want to get rid of some things in the image. Well, you could go over here to the, the mask tool here or just press Q on the keyboard. It'll automatically open it up. And then you obviously have to select which mode you want, the content or wear, the stamp or the uh, band-aid, the heel brush one. I forget, always forget the name of that one. But that's a cool way to quickly select or deselect the healing tool. It makes it a little bit faster. Now, we're going to save the best for last, but let's get into kind of the comparisons. Let's say you're getting near the end of your edit and you want to see what it looks like. Well, there's two modes that you can do this. The first one is full screen mode. Press the F button and it brings the image into full screen so you see the entire image. The next is called dark mode. If you press L on the keyboard, it darkens most of the screen. If you press L again, it darkens the entire screen. So this is dark mode so you can see kind of how it looks without any other distractions around you. Press L again to get back into the screen. But let's say you want to compare the photo to another or use one as a reference for editing. Well, let's press C on the keyboard and you'll notice that it'll bring up another image by it. Now you'll notice this one says select and this one says candidate. Let's say you want to change this, this, this candidate one. Well, click the image below and then choose another image. How about that one? Good. Now let's say you want to change this image. Well, you select that one and then you choose another one. And you can see you can quickly and easily look through to compare the different images. If you want to go back to your original edits, press D and that goes back to your develop tab and brings that back to full screen. But let's say you want to use a photo and edit at the same time as reference. Press shift R on the keyboard, then drag and drop any image. Let's say this one into this box. And now you have a reference to edit from. Now you can come over here and you can actually adjust and make adjustments to this photo while you are looking at this photo to get them to match. And this is a really good way to make sure your images are fluid throughout, especially if you're doing like a set or something, or you want your Instagram mood board to look good. This is a good way to do that. Okay. And finally we get into the mask tools. So to get out of reference mode, press D on the keyboard. And then what we're going to do is press shift W this opens your mask panel. So this allows you to see all your masks, but let's say you want to just create a radial filter. Well, press M on the keyboard and it automatically gives you a radial filter, which you can drag and put on the image. Now, a little bonus tip. If you press shift and drag, it gives you a perfectly straight line or radial filter from left to right, right to left, up, down, etc., etc. Now let's say you wanted to create a radial filter instead of a linear filter. I think I might've said radial earlier. I meant linear, but if you want to create a radial filter, you press shift M and it gives you a radial. So now you have quickly accessed your radial filter and you can just easily make this perfect. Just like the linear filter, if you hold shift and you get a perfectly straight line, if you press shift with the radial filter, you'll get a perfect circle not an oval. I release shift. Now I have an oval. I press shift and now I have a perfect circle. So that's a good way to get exactly the radial that you want or the linear that you want. And finally, if you want to do a brush tool, simply press K on the keyboard. Why K? I don't know. Whoever did all of these hotkeys was either drunk or just didn't know what to do. <laughs> Anyways, by pressing K, we immediately get a new brush mask and we can brush to our heart's content. And those are a quick few of the most amazing hotkeys in Lightroom that will help speed your process up. But you don't have to remember them. I actually made a hotkey cheat sheet, which I'm going to give to you for free and I'll link in the description. And it also comes with three awesome presets. So. Go down in the description, click the link, you fill out the little form, it'll email directly to you. If you don't see it, make sure to check spam or junk folders and mark emails by me as not spam or junk. That way you don't miss some cool stuff because you might miss out on something. Just saying. Anyways, that's it for this video. So go ahead and hit the like button because I know one of these is going to save you some time. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if uh, you have any questions, you know where the comment section is, but I will see you guys next week. Later.